Hello and welcome to another trip report. I didn't record the introduction at the moment I took the train, but this time on a train from San Sebastian or Donostia. Donostia is the Basque language. Easy to confuse because both names will be used and not all the time they use both names at the same time. Um, to Barcelona. This is on an Alvia train, what means this is a train that can go both on the regular railway lines here in Spain and on the high speed tracks. These are different track gauges, tell you a bit more about that in this video. What I do in this video, I will show you the railway station of San Sebastián Donostia for the mainline trains, tiny bit of the railway station for the Esco train because I arrived there by Esco train. Um, show you uh, the train of course and some views from the train i hope you like this video if you do so please give me a thumbs up or if this is a helpful video to you and if you like to see more train related videos i'll tell you more about or traveling on a more sustainable way of transportation subscribe to my channel for now let's roll the intro The day before I arrived with an ESCO train from Bilbao, what is a beautiful route. These trains run every 30 minutes from here to Hende in France, so therefore this is the most frequent connection between France and Spain as well. The ESCO train station is not really close to the main railway station. Early 2020 I already covered this route to France and I also made a video now for the ESCO train from Bilbao to San Sebastian or Donostia. All related videos can be found in the description of this video and I also do have a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports I did. I get back to this at the end of the video. For now, let's go to the early morning when my train departed and let's go to the main railway station of San Sebastian or Donostia. At the front there's a parking grass and something else you find at the front is a taxi stand. This is not a truly big railway station I do have to say, but it's good for what it's being used for. Some long distance trains do depart here, but most trains that do depart from here are the Seca Ninjas the commuter rail of San Sebastian or Donostia. At the moment I arrived at the railway station, I noticed there was already a line for the long distance trains. But the railway station itself is not that big as you can see over here. There's some place where you can wait, some shops, ticket counters and that's it. For long distance trains there is a check-in process. Basically your ticket will be checked and then you can go to the platform. Because this is, at least until the railway station of Saragossa, not a high-speed train. There is no security check in the sense that you have to put your luggage into an X-ray scanner. I noticed that at smaller stations along the way, the conductor of the train did the ticket check within the train. What is much more efficient if you ask me? I think it would make sense if you can just open the gates with your ticket, what is possible by the way, and then go to the train and have your ticket checked within the train. And don't be stubborn and open the gates with your tickets and go to the train, because by having your ticket checked, you will be marked as present. The tracks are not that special. There's one tunnel linking the tracks with each other and for people with mobility problems or a lot of luggage, you also find elevators over here. For the rest, this railway station is not that special. Of course, at the platform you will find screens that will host information about the upcoming departure, but I couldn't find any composition screens. Maybe I just didn't look good. If they are there, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, this is my train coming in. It's a Renfe class 120.050 that do has a top speed of 250 km per hour on the high speed line and 160 km per hour on the conventional railway lines and can host 237 passengers. What is not that much for a train? And tickets do automatically include a seat reservation for these trains. Ticket prices are based on the demand of passengers. So therefore, ticket prices might be higher on popular days and lower on less popular days. Also, on some popular sections of the routes, the ticket prices might be higher than on less popular sections. 
At the beginning of the journey it was relatively quiet I do have to say. Screens at the outside of the train do host a carriage number, train number, final destination and some basic information about the stops along the way. This has all been marked very clear, you can't miss it. I don't know exactly where the 050 stands for behind the railway class number, but if you know this let me know in the comments. Somehow I feel like these trains have been refurbished because there are power plugs and I was missing this on exactly the same train type I had on the route from Barcelona to Bilbao. On longer journeys power plugs are quite important in trains. At the moment you enter the train, at the doors it has been clearly marked what seat numbers can be found into what direction and a map of the specific carriage with some safety information can be found over there as well. For the train tour I will start off by showing you the second class or Tourista. This comes in a 2x2 configuration and typical for Spanish long distance trains, most seats are placed into the driving direction, apart from the seats that do face each other of course. Obviously these are long distance trains so there is quite a lot of space for luggage. Of course you can use the overhead luggage racks, but there are also luggage racks at the beginning and the end of each compartment where you can store quite a lot of luggage. As you probably already noticed, most seats do come in an airline style composition or long distance bus composition. In this case you find a fold out table in the seat in front of you, right below that a magazine rack, a food rest, a small garbage can can be found between the seats front of you. Above the seats in the luggage rack there's a reading light and it is also where you find the seat number. Right under the seats there are power plugs and integrated within these seats there's an entertainment system. I'll get back to that later on in the video. Even though I don't need it because it was still dark when I left and it was quite rainy, all windows do have a sunscreen but this might be useful, it's Spain after all. Coat hangers can be found at the side and at the end of these compartments you will find basic information about the route on LED screens. At the seating all over the train there are screens and during the ride movies will be played over here. During the rides, mainly after most stations, uh, some staff will come by to hand out earplugs you can use to connect to the entertainment system. If you connect this to the entertainment system, you have the audio for the movies that will be played on these screens. I did not test this out myself by the way. And something else I noticed, in these trains there is no Wi-Fi. First class or preferente comes in a 2x1 configuration. Just like in the second class, most seats do come in an airline style or long distance bus composition as a food rest, a fold out table in the seat in front of you a magazine rack, a garbage can and other seats do have an entertainment system as well. The seats can be reclined just like in the second class by the way with a handle at the side. Right under the seat there's a power plug, above the seat there's a reading light integrated within the luggage rack and this is also where you find the seat number and just like in the second class at the end of the compartment screens will host basic route information. Of course there are also luggage racks at the end of these compartments and you also find screens at the ceiling for movies. At the moment the seats do face each other, there's a bigger table between the seats and you can fold it out to make it a little bit bigger. At the side there's a small garbage can. Having seats that do face each other doesn't mean you do have a nice window seat as you can see here for example. The first class product is nice, but I'm also happy with my second class product I do have to say. For now, it's time to review the toilets in these trains. Of course you find different kinds of toilets, but these are the most common toilets you can find. They're quite tiny, but even then you can still turn them into a nursery space for babies, ideal for traveling with young children. Of course there's a washing sink, the toilet itself. And please believe me when I tell you that I tested the toilet in all possible ways, but I don't put everything on camera. There's also a hand dryer, and what else do I need to say about the toilets? If you have something I can add to this, let me know in the comments. At the beginning of my journey this cleaning towel was overhanded, and at that moment I could also grab some earplugs for the entertainment system, but I didn't do that. 
even though that's nice, for me it's creating a lot of extra waste. A trolley service will come by every now and then, but there's also a dining car, although the dining car is not that big. The menu is the same as in the AVE high speed trains. Close to the dining car there's also a bigger accessible toilet. I think you have an idea of how these trains look like. However, there is something extra I need to tell you about these trains, because they are quite unique, because they can change the track gauges, so the width of the wheels can be changed. This is also being called the Talgo technique. Long story short, in Spain the train lines were originally built on wider Iberian gauge tracks, and this is, and I'm not joking, to prevent the French army from interfering into Spain by trains. Apart from that, in the north of Spain there's quite a big network of narrow gauge railway lines. These are the green lines, the blue lines or the standard gauge high speed lines, and then you find the red lines and these are the Iberian gauge white tracks. So basically the conventional railway lines in Spain. Even though the high speed railway network is really impressive and per capita Spain has the most dense high speed train network in the world. It's not even close to China where everybody is talking about. For conventional railway lines, Spain is not that impressive. However, if you want to be able to use both the high speed lines and the conventional railway lines, you can get at much more destinations by train. And this is exactly what the Alvia trains do. A part of the route will be on conventional railway lines and other parts on high speed railway lines. In my situation, right before the railway station of Zaragoza, the train went through a facility to change the width of the tracks from Iberian gauge tracks to standard gauge tracks for the high speed lines. This is why the top speed before the railway station of Zaragoza was 160 km per hour and right after that 250 km per hour. My second trip report ever was also on a train that went through such a facility but that was on the Belarusian and Polish border. That was on a train from Berlin to Moscow. Before I show you some views from the train on this route, if you're interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this channel. However, in the description of this video on YouTube, there's a link to a map and on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes, the train icons do indicate the station review and the ferry icons do indicate the ferry terminal reviews. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train and sometimes ferry traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. Of course I'm creating more trip reports, so both the map and the channel will be updated. For now let's watch some views from the train on this route. I do have to say. In the morning it was quite early so still dark and the weather was not that good during this trip.
So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Once again, if you did so, please give me a thumbs up or if this has been a helpful video to you. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. See you on my next video.